Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, we're going to continue on this uh, late 70s Chrysler SnowRunner motorcycle slash snowmobile. Yeah, I think we've got two videos under our belt, and hopefully this is going to be the last one on it. First one was kind of getting an assessment of it and then going through the engine and getting that running. The next one we got into putting new drive chain and uh, going through fuel system, electrical system. There's a couple of things that we knocked out too. Oh, getting a clutch setup working and new bearings put up inside there. And we got that to operate uh, fairly decent. So we're going to continue on. We need some more love uh, put to it. And hopefully we can get it taken care of in this one. But before we go any further, let's go see how it cold starts. I'm curious to make sure we got all the engine issues taken care of. All right, see if she does. Give her some choke. The gas is still connected. It didn't leak all over the place. That's a good sign. And that's choke. See what it does. Okay. At least it made noise. That's a good sign. Turn the choke off. A little bit of throttle. that took care of that issue we had to dig into that carburetor uh, for a second time we had a couple of issues with it on the first round the other thing too we did the decompression valve took it out got the valve to work i do not think it's functioning there might be uh let's go take that back out of there and try to poke through to the combustion chamber it feels like it just doesn't do much yeah when we picked this thing up it had a broken pull start it seemed like it was the last thing it got parked for and it could be from there we go. the fact that the decompression wasn't working and the resistance that it takes to go through that so we'll go take that out we'll, we'll pull on it right now it should feel like there's no spark plug in it Let's see what we get yeah see make any difference whatsoever let's go and stab at it <laughs> a little bit let's see if we can see what's going on in there kind of looks like you can see a little hole in the very center of it i did wonder if that's just kind of carboned up let's go stab at it with a pick I have a drill bit would work better. Really don't want to take the cylinder head off if we don't have to. Let's go get, yeah, let's go get a little drill bit. Let's see if we could twist that. Yeah, not doing anything. Hopefully we get some snow coming in. It's, you hear it melting off the roof out there right now. Mine for gold. See if we get coming out of it. I don't know how tiny that hole is neither. I would figure it just goes right through the center of the cylinder head. Here we go. Here we get little goobers of a. Uh... Metal and carb. I'm going to go a little bit smaller size bit. Get the tiniest bit I got. It's 060. Let's see if that'll. Got to dig through the mud. Yeah. Can get a little bit more length on it. There it goes. It's through now. Let's see if it feels any different. 
Yeah, you can hear it. I'm gonna work in that just a little bit more. Probably try to open it up just a, a tad. We can put that valve back in there. I think we got it though. All right, pushed in so it should be leaking. And when it fires, it should pop that out. Let's see what we get. I'm gonna choke it again. about that that's taken care of we want to jump on next let's go for um that drive train drive train that drive chain that we cleaned up which is the original one it's super sloppy let's go check my stash you can go come up with something else that's uh probably a little bit better almost looks like a bike chain it's close to it Ooh, these milk crates should be all kinds of Chains and bits and parts and pieces. It's too small. It's too fat. This is garage door, like garage door chain. Here's the cable that would be on it. Maybe this is it. Yeah, let's go bring this over with us. There's about one thing. <laughs> There's enough there. <laughs> Put it up next to it. This is, might be a little smaller. Let's try to. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's following pretty good. So 35 is what the size of it is. I saw a number on it. So you can find a master link if there is one. Yeah. So I think we'll take that bottom sprocket off. It'll take it right off again. Damn it. Yeah. Might be on the other side of the master link. I don't see one to you. Still don't see one. Let's go see how this fits over the sprocket. Get the right thing. Yeah, that'll work. Feels right. No clumpiness. Let's um, try to string that up and over it. Leave the key out for now. We'll string that over it. We'll see where it kind of lines up and we'll cut it. And hopefully I got a master link in my stash. I draped that around. It looks like it's going to be all that much better, huh? Yeah, I don't see any. We can't get an extra tooth neither. And there's no adjustment on it. That's it right there. That's almost about what we had. I wonder if the sprockets are worn down. Like what would, um, did they just run it like that? <laughs> Seems kind of sucky to me. Yeah. Try stretching it to get one more tooth. <clears throat> hey, you can't even get it. No, it's like it's like in, in between the two of them. So I don't know if this game is going to bias anything. I'm going to go look at some of the components. Maybe I'll pop the clutch off again and we'll take a peek at that. And uh, yeah, I don't see any adjustment though. It looks like it's got like um, it's just fixed screws for the engine. If you loosen them up, it just looks like they're tapered and it just kind of centers itself. And the same for the jack shaft on the bottom. I don't see any kind of a adjustment anywhere to, to raise into or lower that spark. I wonder if that track, can we, um, yeah, there's the back of them right there. Can we like lower or raise that track? You want to try loosening them? See if we get anything out of it. If we could loosen this up, it'll maybe have a little bit of movement in it. 
And let's give it a shot. See if they'll crack loose for us. Yeah, see if they crack. That one already looks like it's loose. Looks like it's sticking out some. Yeah. Let's see if they're tapered. If they're tapered, yeah, they are. Yeah, so that's like, it's just gonna try to pull it back to center. So I guess we have to live with whatever dimension that is. This rocker wood doesn't look worn though. I don't see like it's beat down into the grooves, you know, they still got a good squared off top on them. Hmm. Well, I figure while we got the stuff, we might as well put another chain on it. And I'm gonna have to use that, what's called a half link. Generally what you would do is you would take this whole link out, this one, and then you would have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it mail and mail end, and you would put a master link in between the two. But you can't do that, because we, we like I can't even get you know one extra tooth. So it's something called a half link that has one of one side and one of the other, and you could put them together. I got a box that has them in there. So let's go pop that off of there and get one of those on. And my hope is maybe like over time, it'll kind of stretch just a little bit where we can get that other last little link out of it and then it'll just go back to normal. But I'm just guessing. Yeah, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So that's a regular master link. You see how it's got the same barrel on each end of it. And then this is a hat, what's called the half link. Still works kind of like a master link, but it, it's gonna fit over the existing barrel that's there and then it comes with one for the other side. It's got like a little pin that you put through it. Here's the kit. You see the little pins that are down inside there. That's what you use. That's a good yard sale find, huh? Definitely comes in handy. So they call the chain break. Try to do it without getting my hands in the way. And it essentially just pushes the pin out of the center. Like that. It allows that link to open up. That comes off. And you can see how it popped the pin out of the top of it. Now this top can rotate and come off of there. Hopefully. Hardest part is getting that other half link to swing out of the way. And like I said, then this one's gonna go on in its place. And you got the barrel that fits back down over it. Now you could take this out altogether and put the pin in that I was showing you. Sometimes you just kind of squeeze it back together and you just hit, a, hit it with a punch in the center. That's probably what I'm going to try and do. <laughs> if it falls apart later, you can say I told you so. Make sure it's gonna work for us. We cinch it down. Yeah. There you go. Now I can go put that other pin, that one with the cotter key in it. You could just stick it right in a vice tube. I'm trying to whack it with a hammer, get it to seat over it. Put a little nut right there. Give it some place for the post to push into. That should do it. Get to kind of come through that hole a little bit better. There you go. Now it's proud. Now I'm going to whack that over. Peen that with a uh, punch, and that should hold this. Plus, it, you know, it's still free to swivel. That's what it looks like after. A little cotter key, as you guys across the pond call them split pins, I think. Oh, there you go, there's half link installed. That one, eh, <laughs> it's a new chain, but again, just as sloppy as the one that was on there. We'll see what happens. So let's see what we got for brakes. This has what's called a band brake. A lot of mini bikes use it too. Essentially, it's just a piece of steel that goes around the outside of the clutch. 
back the way it goes. Like that. I'm sure I got a clip that has to go there. And when you squeeze the cable, all it does is, you know, as the bike's running away and the outside shell is spinning, you pull that, it just locks up on the on the outer shell and stops you. Unless you have a chain break and then you're just free <laughs> you're freewheeling. Let's uh just quickly look into that cable, make sure it's okay to go. It's got a a lever up on the handlebar. It actually feels pretty decent. I'm gonna try spinning the track and Cable feels pretty free. I don't think we have to do much with that at all. I'm gonna go just throw that clip on there and uh, I guess the test ride will kind of show whatever issues it has. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's dragging or anything. Hey, what do you want to work on next? Um, a couple things that I don't like the way the throttle cable is bent like that. I wonder if we can uh, you take it apart and get maybe some shrink wrap, uh, shrink tubing over it and heat it up so it's got like a we can just take the bend out of it too, out of the metal part. Maybe put some shrink wrap over there just to kind of soften that bend a little bit. The headlight's all out of whack and we need a bulb for that. We could probably take that off. I think the front end is just sloppy due to the pinning, the way it's put together. This whole thing's meant to come apart. You pull pins off of it and it all kind of tucks within itself. And we got a couple of covers that are messed up. This one is just ground away on the bottom. I'll show you. What do I do with it? Yeah. Get you dizzy. It's on the bench. Yeah, so this one's the bottom's been chewed up from running through the woods, I guess. And that's I don't know what happened to that. Oh, the exhaust. Cook that a little bit. Then the other one is the one for the track. Is uh, this one. And as you can see, she's pretty much almost two pieces all the way across. So we gotta try to do some kind of surgery to put that thing back together the best we can. Yeah, let's try for that throttle. The rest of it is like cosmetics. Rather than just kind of finish up the mechanicals. Might be able to get some lube down that too. It does because the throttle kind of stays where you leave it. It doesn't um, return. Get in there. And my opinion was where that was binding is not helping things. We should be able to get the cable out of it. There we go. And if that will come out, I don't think it will. I think we got to take the the barrel with it, but I don't know if we're going to be able to um, get shrink tubing over that. Let me go see what we got. Hopefully, it'll shrink down enough if we are able to. Let me see what we can come up with. Let's see if that'll make it. I don't, I don't think it's gonna. Now, here's the other side of it. I don't know if um, I should be able to lift that right out of there. Yeah. Okay, so the plastic can come off, the spring can come off, and that barrel can come off. And we'll be able to fit it over this and we'll just slide it all the way up the machine to the other end. I've showed this thing before. It's called a cable boiler. You can get them on eBay or Amazon. Essentially what it does, it's a rubber jacket and it, it steps down on the inside of it from fat to you know the skinny side of a cable and you can crush down on it with a little cam. So what you do is on any cable, you can run this over it. This is a generally fat than what you normally would be doing. But anyway, you crank that down and this can accept the straws from any kind of spray can. We got PB. Actually, I don't want car cleaner. I want oil. Go grab one. So just to lube the cable, you can get that. It'll feed right in there. Sometimes it'll kick out that way, but if you spray it, what essentially it's doing is it'll push the oil up the side of the cable and sometimes You'll see it come out the other end. Oh, I gotta get the seal on that one on my knot center. But it'll push oil up the cable, up that side and out the other side. So it kind of makes it so it helps lube it. I don't know, 
bindy this one is. It's pretty bindy. That's why we're doing it. It's a little hard to pull. Let me go run that in. I'm going to do the same on the other end too. And then you can just kind of work that cable back and forth. Yeah, it's still the same thing. But it should, in all intentions, be pushing up this jacket. Sometimes you actually see it come right through. It'll come out the other end. And if you have any like chafe in the cable where the plastic wore away, like if it's got a rub mark, you'll see it kind of shooting out of there too. So I'm going to do the same on this end. Try to get that. And we could put it right right there and put it on it and feed it from this side too. Let's see if any better luck on this side. Try to get this up in the air where you guys can see. I knew that was gonna happen. Plus I'm putting it in the wrong hole. <laughs> Good see, like you can even run like a cleaner through it first if you want. It's got like a lot of rust. Let's get that off of there. Let's see how it moves now. And you work it back and forth. Yeah, now it's like butter. Before on the other end, it was it was really kind of growly. Good. Good for another 45 years. Now the throttle hopefully won't stick. So I got three pieces up here lined up, ready to go, of shrink tubing, and just kind of fed that in there. I'm gonna go over this. This is an adjustment for your, uh, take the slack out of your cable for your throttle. I'll leave it all the way in, but I'm gonna run it. We should still be able to turn that, but again, I just want support going across where that that poor bend was. So throw a little bit of heat on that. That should just go whoop. Listen real close, it'll make that noise. <laughs> Knock that down 10,000 degrees. See how it shrinks that right up. Whoop. There it goes. Get away from the little overkill with the size of the flame, but Cigarette lighter actually work pretty good. Let's get on that one. Let's sip up another one. We'll just do that three times. Shoot more than enough. It's also good too, like I was talking about, if you got a piece of cable that's worn bare and you see the metal, like it's got a rub mark, you're down to the metal, you put a piece of this over it and keeps the weather out. Because that's what happens is when you have that, water gets in and it rusts the cable to the jacket. There we go. I'm going to go put all that back together. I'm going to throw some lube down on that slide by that carburetor and we'll see if we get a, uh, a snapped, a snapping back throttle. And it's all back together. Look at that. Like butter. There's an adjustment on the other end too. We don't have to adjust that, but that should help it. Let's get into, you know what it says? You think that's still in there? Come quickly pop that out of there. Is he gonna pull a pin? Let me go tap that out. It's been a, a day or two. Now we tap that out. See, see if there's a rope in there. What do you think? Yes, no? I'm gonna say it's still in there. I don't know what condition it's gonna be in. Been wrong. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> There's supposed to be a way to adjust the height of this. I think the only way you can kind of do it with this one though is maybe you could take it and just flip it around 180. We're gonna leave it on the lower position like that. I'm a little on the taller side. But I guess if you're a kid you can take it and you know put that part up around there and put the fegs foot pegs here. 
Let's jump on the uh, headlight and taillight. I think the only thing else, other than, you know, we want to take apart paint stuff, is, um, oh, we have to get pliers for that, is to take um, that cover that split, and we got to still stitch that back together. And we'll get this opened up. We see you got for a bulb in there. I guess it's just blown, the vibration that happens. I'll bring you back when I get that off. Got one screw out and the other one is hanging just to hold everything together. We think we'd be able to pop that lens forward and kind of spin it on an angle. And a little more room. I think both of them are gone. We'll look under the scope real quick. Yeah, it looks like both are gone. Not sure if it's six or 12 volt. Let me see if I can clean it up and read the side of it. That socket's looking like it needs a little bit of cleaning, huh? I hope you could push that wire through. I may just, I'm gonna go pick out that spray some, this pad needs to be able to float behind it. See, that's what puts tension up against the, uh, back of the bulb. I'm going to try just maybe a little scotch bright or something, get in there and clean up that. I shoved the 12 in there because I figure 12 is not going to blow. <laughs> Let's uh, fire it up if it'll fire. See if we get anything. It should have a, uh, I think a parking light and a brake light. I'm gonna go button that up and we'll jump over to the headlight. That headlight's busted going right across it. And it's a sealed beam. Um, did I come right out of there? Or am I spinning? I did not expect that to move how rusty it was. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> uh, we may have to cut that bolt. We may have to take a whiz wheel and cut the center of that bolt out. Um, get her up in the air. Yeah, it's all somebody egged that all out trying to get it out of there. Let's just cut it and put another one in there. We're in now. Hopefully, the lens doesn't just fall apart when this comes off. What if it's like a car headlight? That'd be neat if it was. <laughs> Damn it. See what it says for voltage on it too. 12 volt, yeah. So we lucked out. <laughs> Guessing the right thing. I'm gonna see what we got for a light for this. I think it is a one of those expensive ones. I think I have a replacement, but it's a six volt. I don't think it's 12. Then we saw like an aftermarket one. You could change the element in it. In the land of junk, like I think this is gonna be a six volt. Roughly the same size. Actually, that's got the little cams on it, doesn't it? I replaced one on a bike and I bought two. Is that it? That might be it. Yeah, it's for CT. CT70. I don't think that's going to be the right size. Smash on the ground. That's the ring. So that's looking more like a car headlight one. Let me see if I can find a, um, a car dual element. I don't know if it's got to be one of those. I think, is the four headlight system smaller? might be a size all by itself, you know? Yeah, it's gonna be too big. Shh. 
shove that in there. <laughs> That's the size it needs to be. I think that's an old burned out one. Yeah. Not the size anyway. So I was able to find something close. This one just totally fell apart as I'm walking away with it. Um, I may go chase this one on eBay. It's got a part number on it. It's going to have high beam, low beam. This one is just more like a fog light, but it's got the same outer base on it. The same locking tab that this one has here, but it has wires you got to screw on. So I'm going to make little jumpers off that plug. I'm gonna leave that plug alone. I don't want to damage it. We'll just make a little jumpers and screw onto the bulb. We could put that back in there. At least it'll have a headlight. I don't think I'm even all that concerned between high beam and low beam, right? Just kind of base it to where we want. That should get us at least illuminated. Well, the bulb's back in there. Still don't know if it works yet. It kind of looks like it's off thinking about something. <laughs> What do you think our chances are if we just kind of jump up there and manhandle this bracket and try to bend it back into place? I probably should have done it when the bulb was out, but that's how I roll. Let's see what happens. Alright, so it's got to go that way. A little more. Bracket's aluminum. Something like that. Is it better? Looks like it's facing out the ski. So you can go this way a little. I don't think that did anything. <laughs> Alright, let's go fire it up and see if it turns on. Beam, but that's fine. At least we got something if you do decide to ride at night. I think it's time we deal with this hot mess. <laughs> uh, I bought one of those. It's like a staple gun that it goes in a soldering iron and melts the things together. I bought one once before. It lasted about six staples and then crapped out. I did end up buying another one if I could find it. Maybe we'll try that. And it just kind of bridges the. Uh, You'll see, maybe if I find it. So that's what it looks like. And you put these little tips in there, a little squiggly line. And it heats that up and then melts its way into the plastic and you let it cool off and uh, pull out. <laughs> Let's go see if it uh, lasts more than six times this time. Giving it the benefit of a doubt. Might not even work at all. Get in there. Cool off for a second before I pull out. Yeah. Right. Did it break right in the middle? <laughs> the wire might have broke right in the middle, the center of it. I'm gonna keep trying that, and uh, we'll see how we make out. Let's try going like long, long ways with it. Can you see? Something like that. The other thing is, uh, what's a crazy glue in baking soda? I'm not sure how well that does on plastic though. There you go. So I'm gonna chase that all the way down the whole length of it. Let me jump to the center a little bit and stitch her together and I'll bring you back. Oh, this one actually stayed working. You just had a dud. And I started doing the inside. I'm like, well, you don't want to see the wiggly lines from the outside. And I thought about it. I wonder if the track kind of like rubs against these two. You know, when these are kind of whipping around it and it, it they kind of like lifts up, you know, from the velocity of it. I'm like, well, that's not going to be very good for chewing up on them. So, 
I'm gonna grind out whatever I can on those, the ones that are on the bottom, but the, I definitely switched over to the other side and turned her into a porcupine. But they should be out of harm's way. <laughs> I think there's about, I wanna say there's about 50 of them in there. <laughs> they sell that cover. Um, it was, I think it was kind of pricey though. It was 200 and something bucks maybe. And then you still have to buy a decal kit after it. So we'll see how I like it. If I wanna go, you know, put the extra, you probably put another, you know, 500 bucks between that piece of plastic that piece of plastic and uh, got a seat cover and then the logo kit that goes on it that's getting ahead of herself all right i'm gonna go trim all them back and see if i can get that cover back on there Got that cover on there looks de <laughs> i'm not gonna say it looks decent <laughs> and i'm putting this one on you can tell it it got hot at some point instead of melting the plastic all the way around from the heat coming off the clutch but it's got two bolts it looks like to attach it one's still there and there's a spot here i just wonder if they may have put like a but even with that you can't get it you know like possibly a tensioner or some sort that that would hit the cover and you wouldn't want it because the problem is you excel and decelerate. So you, you, you kind of want, like say uh, on a, um, a bicycle or, or something, the powered side of it. So say this is, so it's spinning this way. This side of the thing, you don't want to tension because this is where all the power is being drawn through. But when you let off, the other side kind of tensions up. So I would think it would be, if there was, it would be on this side of it kind of the, the idle side of it with a slack side of it, but you don't reach. Any closer, you're gonna hit that bolt, so. Be nice if I had one to look at to compare to, but I don't know. I don't know. My guess is maybe just that the, the play that's on the sprockets are, are worn that much where it causes that much of an issue. I gave it a quick wipe down, it looks a little better. At some point, like I said, I'll probably come back and paint the black pieces, but I'll just make sure we're all good to go mechanically. Let's fire it up. Uh, I want to adjust the air fuel mix a little bit, it's a little on the rich side. I don't have the air filter for it. That should be here in a day or so. And then, you know, we probably just tweak it again after that. But let's go see how she does. Let's go give her the old uh, cold start decompression valve working, all that kind of stuff, and uh, give her its last run down. Let's make some noise. Try not giving it a choke. Try giving it a choke. <laughs> there we go.
run a little bit and get it cleared out. Oh, lights are working. I think that's it. The only thing we're missing now is snow. <laughs> so I don't know how we're going to kind of work out with this. Um, is it all depends on when the video kind of goes up. I may put it up just as it is if I don't have snow and then we'll try to bring it back when we do and maybe I know somebody else who has one of these and we may try to do a ride together. We'll see how that works out. Again, I'm still waiting on the air cleaner. That's really about it. So you think this thing is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> like you see what my riding partners are going to be trying to putt around on. I don't know if this it's going to be conducive to trying to ride what we want to ride. I guess we're going to go find out. So this thing <laughs> is a creation of Justin's. What is it? It's the snow trike. So it's a VW trike that looks like it's been sitting here a little while. A week or two. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing in the process? You putting a carburetor on it? And I put a new carburetor on it. Yeah, yeah. I see wires hanging out of it. Oh, and these wires. This, this is nothing. This is for the trailer. No. This is the wiring for the thing. I'm not worrying about that right now, but um, I just hitched up fuel. I just used the uh, the Redneck uh, squirt, filling system, fill, fill system, pulling springs. Thank you. Uh, and I filled the uh, I just filled the carb up a little bit. I can't get in there to fill the float pole. So it's, it's, it's not thick enough. You're just trying to get it fired up now. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Just I'm in time. Here. Perfect. Just in time. <laughs> is that a dad joke? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we'll see if it fires up. Yeah. Get those gas cans nice and close when it fires up. <laughs> well, double fist it. It's going, don't worry about it. Alright, let's see what happens. You ready? Yeah. Awesome. Typical, typical nature of my luck here. Get a little better connection, maybe. Does that battery have any juice in it? Other uh, than the jump? Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm ah. Alive. Now it's got fuel up here. Yes. All right. I'm gonna put a little more down in the throat. Where did I put that high-tech fill system? I'm not telling you. I got my homeowner's kit. Yep. Gotta have that. Come on, baby. You more. It's starting to puff. Your first Volkswagen? Yeah, first, <laughs> first one. I had to cannibalize parts off my split bus. What's this thing called? What was the body of it? Arizona Trikes. Right. Yeah. Does the throttle work? I gotta hitch that up. I gotta cannibalize that off. Oh boy. Yep. Yep. I think this is, uh, this might be old fuel happening. Water. Maybe. I don't know why it keeps doing that. It's like not a good connection. I don't know. Maybe it's the wiring. Maybe it's the trailer wiring. Nothing to see. Hmm. Think you flooded it? Probably. Did you jump it down the throat? I did. Uh, I'm gonna go get that little cable connection. Why don't you all I'll hold the throttle open and you can uh... throw the cop away? Why don't you hold that for one sec? Oh, let me hold that. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah I can open. smell it, yeah. Yeah, that's fun. That's why it keeps walking up a little bit. I got the choke off too, yeah, go ahead.
try it again. Yeah. You want a little fuel or no? No. No. I think you got too much. How much did you dump down it? No. Did the, uh, did the wire come off? Off the coil or something? Ooh, it stinks. You got nothing on the uh, solenoid. The oh. wire on the solenoid. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you might need that. It's probably just dumping all the fuel down in there. Yeah, you got, it's going to shut it. it off. I can hear it. I can hear it dripping down in there right now. Think so? <laughs> well, the, the other one didn't have an electronic choke on it. Or shut off, I mean. This is that new fancy style carburetor. Bolts, man. But while he's screwing with that, trying to get it to run, I say we... My stuff's always broken. Go for a ride. <laughs> Hopefully. Go for those cores. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. That's Justin's stomach. Yeah. That might be a little too thin for us to play on. <laughs> too bad. I was hoping we can go right out there. Good thing about not needing reverse, you just pick it up, turn it around, fire it up. Lighter snow. It's just the heavy stuff that bogs down. You get in the thin we came stuff. Up back out of there, it was like it was a yeah, cruising. Yeah, like two, three inches of, of you know, instead of like six or seven, it really kind of packs down. Worked well. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I didn't think they worked that good. I thought it was gonna suck. Yeah, I did too. Girl. Willie hurt himself.
<laughs> I noticed it started going faster over there. Yeah, thin snow is good. Thick yeah. Stuff, yeah. So I'm sure if it was packed, yeah. like if a snowmobile was packed it. So we're checking for spark now. You want to go crank it on, oh, on eyeball? Ready? Yep. Hold on. Try it again. Yeah, no spark. Me or you? Oh, I got it. There you go. Definitely got fire. So yeah, you got no battery though. Yeah, we got no battery, no balls. Maybe we push start it. Yeah, I'll pull it with that. Pull it with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna let this charge up. A It sucks in the thick smell. It's better than the soft stuff. I keep the wind off, yeah. He's going down. <laughs> There he goes. You get the thin stuff, it cruises. <laughs> oh my gosh, so over the place. You get used to it though. Over the clutch. Trying to take a link out. Oh, he hit a root. Oh, down, dead, killed, busted. <laughs> Don't kill your friends, break your toys. I hit a door! <laughs> That's like trying to ride a motorcycle uh, the thing with a loose front the thing, wheel. The, uh, the thing busted. Oh no! What happened? Yeah. Oh, it looks like someone had repaired it. I did. Oh. That lasted long. Well, let me use it. And <laughs> you fat ass! <laughs> Sticking kids. Well guys, somebody broke my toys. I split the rear thing and it's starting to cut into the track a little bit. I didn't think that was going to last very long, but he hit a door with a door handle sticking out of the ground and just kind of stuffed it in the back. And uh, so I just got to run it a little bit and go play with it. It is decent. Again, the conditions are not great for what we're trying to do. Um, I don't know if I want to try running it anymore because it's, you look at the track, it's putting uh, dings all the way around and I don't want to trash it. So. So that might be it for us guys. We're gonna, still going to try to get that thing running, but as far as, far as this machine, I think that's going to wrap her up. She's a fun little toy. Again, just got to get that piece in the back. I think I, I may try buying a new one or trying to find a used one, and uh, it should be ready to rock and roll. But for this, guys, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you soon. Later. Decided to take the track off, the cover off. We'll see how bad I get covered in snow. Or I get covered in mud.
Uh-oh. It broke. I think the ski broke. I, was, I knew that was going to happen. I even called it. Ah, sucker. I was concerned about how brittle it was going to be. That's it. Dead. And I didn't break it. Yeah. You know? Nice things. Mm. Mm. Good thing parts are available. <laughs>